resume reader, Crossong, and today I will be reading to you from Take Two by Muriel Wright. Now, on to chapter 32, One Promise. It was warm and sunny outside. Playful laughter filled the air. The brick house was fairly large. It didn't look quite old, but yet not new either. Staff members had their plates full with setting up a movie set. There were always members rushing in and out of the building. The director of the movie was having a discussion with a young lady in the dining room. Miss Georgia, thank you for letting us use your building for the movie set. It's not a problem. I'm sure the kids are quite happy to see a movie being made in front of their eyes. She chuckled and glanced at the living room. Georgia saw a young boy walk up to her. She could tell he was young. He wasn't as tall as she was yet, but she could tell he would grow to be quite tall and handsome in the future. Georgia lowered her head to speak to him. Hello there. You must be the main actor for this scene. Pleasure to meet you. I'm Georgia. The young boy stared at her, then smiled. His complexion was cheerful and vibrant. Hello, I'm America. Nice to meet you, too. America, one of the staff members is looking for you. A man walked into the dining room. He wore a top hat and a monocle, as well as a suit. It gave him an elegant air. Okay, see you later. America waved goodbye to her, then left the room. What a sweet boy. Who's the man that called him? Georgia asked the director. That's his dad, Britton. Since America is still young, they requested his dad to come along and watch over him. I see. By the way, how long will the shooting last? I can show you the orphanage schedule if you like. The two of them continued to talk. After talking to the staff member, America was quite bored. He got many stares from the other kids. His eyes landed on the living room couch. All the kids were playing outside in the backyard, but there was one singular kid sitting on the couch. Another boy walked up to the one sitting on the couch with a ball in his hand. Russia, do you want to go outside and play with us? The boy on the couch, whose name is Russia, gave an empty stare and ignored them. The girl next to the boy with a ball tugged on his sleeve. Don't bother with a weirdo like him, Ukraine. Let's just go. And so Ukraine was dragged away by the group of kids. The American tilted his head to the right out of curiosity as he stared at the little boy sitting there. He didn't hear what the boy with the ball had said to him, but America could tell what they were saying by their gestures. The boy suddenly felt someone sit next to him. He turned his head and saw a handsome face staring back at him with a smile. Russia furrowed his eyebrows and ignored America. Hi there, my name's America. What's yours? The Russian boy ignored him. America rested his cheek on his palm and continued to stare. Why are you alone? Why don't you play with the other kids outside? America asked him. Russia's complexion grew darker, and it was noticeable that he was getting increasingly irritated. The other kids think I'm weird. So what? Why don't you leave me alone? I have no interest in talking to you. He answered. His tone was gloomy, yet also annoyed. America reached into his pocket and unwrapped something. Here, I usually eat candy to calm my nerves before acting. America handed him a piece. Russia took it out of his palm in confusion. Th thank you? His tone softened a little. 
He remembered his dad telling him to say thank you if someone gave him something. But the thing is, Russia couldn't stand sweets. After a while, America spoke up again. You're good looking. I'm sure when you're my age, you'll look even better. How old are you again? Russia's face flushed red. Huh? I... I... He muttered. The shorter boy answered the question in a deathly quiet voice that America had a hard time hearing. Huh? Oh, wow, you're the same age as me. Why are you so small and skinny, though? Russia grew annoyed again, but before he could answer, America spoke again. You have to eat more. We're at the age where we grow the most. What do you want to be when you're older? I wanted to be an actor, but I don't know anymore. Why does it matter to you? Russia answered in a neutral tone. A moment of silence passed between them. Hey, why are you so gloomy? I think you're a pretty cool person. You do? Yeah. Then you have horrible judgment skills, Russia retorted and turned his head away. That's mean, the American boy pouted, but little did he know that the Russian was smiling a little, just a little. The American boy pointed at Russia's hat. What's that? Russia frowned. None of your business. America chuckled. Okay, you can tell me next time. I'll go then. I'll talk to you again tomorrow, okay? The cheerful boy waved goodbye and ran up to the other child actors that were going to act with him. The Russian analyzed them from afar. They were all talkative, so they all laughed and chatted away, full of energy. Russia also saw America laughing. He felt a little irritated, but ignored it. On that day, America was hoping that Russia would watch him as he acted, but he could not find the short boy. Meanwhile, Russia was just holed up in his room. He wasn't interested in watching America act. The next day, when the whole crew arrived at the orphanage, the first thing America looked for was the same short boy from yesterday. And, indeed, he was found sitting on the same couch. Here! America extended his arm towards Russia to give him something. Russia looked down at America's hand with an annoyed expression, thinking it would be sweets again, until he saw what America had in his hand. It was a flower. A rose. It had a fresh scent. This is... It's a rose. It's my favorite flower. Do you like it? Russia picked up the flower from America's hand. His cheeks were a bit pink. He stared at the rose for a few minutes. Thanks. America was fine with just a thanks. A wide grin curved on his lips. For some reason, the shorter boy liked to see America smile. Even he had no idea why. When America asked him things, this time he would answer, because he didn't want America to leave to talk to the other actors. But again, for today, Russia didn't watch America act. The next day, America immediately sat next to Russia. The boy seemed quite restless and even bashful. Um, here. The shorter boy handed America a flower while his head was turned away out of embarrassment. The American boy was quite surprised that Russia would give him a flower. It was white and yellow and small. This is chamomile, my favorite flower. Wow, it's so pretty. Thank you. 
Russia was satisfied after seeing the other boy's happy face. Today is my last day acting here. We're going to move sets tomorrow. Can you watch me act just for today? He was a bit alarmed when America said that he was moving sets tomorrow. He turned his head to face the other boy, then reluctantly agreed. I'll be expecting to see you then. I have to go now. See you later. Okay, Russia muttered, a little saddened. America left and walked up to his actor friends again, one of which is a boy slightly taller than he is. Since when did you get so close to Russia? Oh, that's his name? Wait, China, how do you know his name? America chuckled after finally finding out his name. China shrugged. He's my friend. My parents are close friends with Georgia, so we come to visit the orphanage sometimes. China continued. He's very quiet and never talks to anyone. That's probably because of what happened with his dad. America raised an eyebrow in curiosity. What happened with his dad? Well, he was abandoned by his dad at a young age without a reason, and the only thing his dad left behind was that hat. I see. No wonder he didn't answer my question then, America thought. China narrowed his eyes into a line. Well, enough of that. We should get ready before the director gets mad at us. Come on. As they were about to start acting, America scanned the room and saw a boy peeking out of the hallway. It was Russia. Knowing that he was watching, America smiled. Russia watched as he acted and was amazed. I want to act as well, was what he thought. When it ended, Russia walked up to America, who was standing by a corner, alone. You were really amazing. I, I really like your acting. He continued to ramble about how amazing it was. He was absolutely awestruck and amazed. He was cheerful when saying all of that. It was a new atmosphere, and America enjoyed the cheerful Russia. I'm still a small actor. I haven't gained many fans, so I appreciate your support. He chuckled. Russia flushed in embarrassment. If I started acting, can we meet again someday in the future? Of course, I promise. The Russian boy felt like crying, but held it in so he didn't embarrass himself more. He was really happy to be able to gain someone's attention after he had been abandoned. It really meant a lot to him, and now he had the motivation to chase after his dreams of being an actor again. Thank you. I'll work hard. Then I'll find you, he muttered with a smile. And that's the end of this chapter. I hope you really enjoyed it, because I did. That being said, I'd like to invite you to join the Discord, which is linked down in the description below. Anyway, I hope you have a nice day, night, or whatever it is for you. Just enjoy your time. And I will see you tomorrow.